Hey guys, it's Reagan and today I'm here to bring you my August book haul which is being sponsored in part by Hatchet Books as well as Fierce Reads. Now, I'm not gonna lie, August I've got a little bit crazy, I don't know, there's just been a lot of really fantastic releases that have come out and then also school started for me so I bought some books to kind of console myself, I tucked them in there with my textbook purchasing, which I am going to show you some of the books I actually got for class in this video too. The first book I'm going to show you guys is an obvious one, and that is the Peru's Topia Book Club pick of the month for the month of August, and that is Baby Doll by Holly Overton. This is a psychological thriller novel, which I've already done a full review on, which I will leave linked down below, but because the fact that it's a psychological thriller, I'm going to be a little brief on the synopsis because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything, but basically this follows our main character Lily, and for the last eight years, I want to say, she's been held captive against her will in a basement. One day her captor forgets to lock the door and she escapes with her daughter Skye. This novel is all about the after of this story and we follow both Lily's perspective, her twin sister's perspective, the captor's perspective, as well as her mom's. So it's definitely intense, it's definitely disturbing, and Sasha and I are having a live show I think September 2nd. If you guys want to tune in and join along, it's really short so if you haven't even read it yet, I bet you can finish it in time to join us to chat. Hey. The book I'm going to show you guys is another obvious one and that is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child parts 1 and 2 by J.K. Rowling and John Tiffany and Jack Thorne blah blah blah. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about this. I know a lot of people have done reviews on this and I'm battling if I still want to do one. I feel like it's kind of late in the game. I've just been Honestly, I'll be straight up. This isn't even a wrap up, but I was disappointed with this book and I don't even really want to talk about it any longer. But this is the continuation of Harry Potter, but in my opinion, just introduced a whole bunch of plot holes, uh, flat characters, and it's honestly incredibly depressing and I don't want to talk about it anymore. So I got this. I have a book that I have been just eyeing ever since I saw people started talking about it and I just had to pick it up for myself. It just sounds so good. And that is The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi? Che? It's a hunker. This is an adult fiction thriller, I want to say. It's about a famous opera star in like the 1800s and she's getting blackmailed. And it just, the story just sounds so dramatic and interesting that I just had to pick it up when I heard that one liner. That one liner, opera art is being blackmailed. I don't know what she's being blackmailed for, but I am excited to find out. Um, I actually haven't really seen any reviews on this, so if any of you guys have read this, please let me know your thoughts. Hopefully they're good, but I picked it up. Next book I have here is an exciting one, and that is The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. I just read the second book to this, The Heart of Darkness, this month, and I loved it. And this is the third and final book to the Remnant Chronicles Chronicle series by Mary E. Pearson, and I'm so pumped to finish this, and it's freaking huge. This is over, it's almost 700 pages long, and... I couldn't be happier about it. This series has only gotten better in my opinion, but the first one is about a princess who runs away from her arranged marriage. We follow her perspective and also two other perspectives. The prince she was supposed to marry and the assassin who was supposed who has been sent to kill her. The story is so complex though and so richly political and I absolutely love the main character. So I am can't wait to finish this. Um, I'm also a little sad that it's over. But I'm, I can't wait to read more by Mary e. Pearson in the future because it's just so good. It's such a solid fantasy series. Could not recommend more highly. Next we have another book I picked up that I felt sort of dumb when I opened the package because it's so much smaller than I thought it was. But it's a book that I've been just hearing such great things about I had to grab. And that is Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. Um, and this is, I guess, a short story because this book is so small and I probably wouldn't have bought it in hardcover if I knew it wasn't even like 200 pages, but that's okay. This story follows um, a kind of a home where a whole bunch of children who have been whisked away through a magical doorway or closet and they've experienced another world and then has to come back to reality um, live because they have a hard time assimilating back into real life. Uh, and then also, I believe there's a thriller element to this. I think this is actually going to be a multi-installment situation, pretty sure. But the premise itself just really hooked me. I love the idea of the kids from Chronicles of Narnia coming back and then 
just going to another place to live to have like like-minded individuals or you know similar experiences among individuals it sounds really good I hear it's fantastic and the writing's great so I'm excited about this next is the book I got from my most recent uh, book subscription unboxing I did a whole video on that I'll link that down below as well if you're interested to see the rest of the stuff I got but the book I got is the muse by Jesse Burton which I'm super excited about because I've read the miniaturist by Jesse Burton and really really liked this it this is a dual perspective narrative, I'm pretty sure, following two different people involved in the artist community at two different times in history. Uh, the first perspective is set in 1960s London and follows a recent immigrant and her trying to get involved in the art world. And the second uh, perspective is set in the 20s and I think their lives just kind of intertwine in some very interesting way. I really like Jesse Burton's writing. It has kind of this magical, eerie element to it that I find to be just very delicious. And I'm excited to see how this goes. Next I have a book sent to me for a review by the author um, and I'm also working with her for this video and that is Vampire Addiction by Eva Poehler. Before I even get into what this book's about, this cover is actually designed by our very own Benjamin of Tomes over at Benjamin of Tomes which I just thought was really awesome. Fellow booktuber making some art. Basically in ancient Greece vampires were expelled to kind of live in the dregs of society and they've always lived in these ancient underground cities forbidden to turning anyone, forbidden from partaking in normal society. Our main character stumbles upon this underground uh, city and basically kind of gets wrapped up into it and, and accidentally I think starts fueling a rebellion and Dionysus is like the overlord which I think is really interesting. Um, if you guys are interested in this book you can actually get the first one for free. I love free treating free books in my book haul because who doesn't like free? All you have to do is sign up for Eva Poehler's newsletter which I'll link down below and she'll send you the first book in ebook form for free to read to try out yourself. So free book, free book. Moving on. Next stack of books, these guys are all the books I had to buy for one of my classes. I'm taking an Enlightenment and Revolution class and I had to buy a lot of little books that cost me a lot of money. So I figured I should show them off because maybe one of you guys are interested in Enlightenment literature and this might give you some good ideas. I'm not going to go into synopsis obviously, I'm just going to literally run through the titles. The first one is my favorite because I love these pocket size editions of history stuff. It's basically a very short introduction of, and this one's the French Revolution, but this series has a whole bunch of introductions to a whole bunch of different uh, time periods or even families or certain events like the French Revolution. It's they're really really great. Uh, I think they're they do a very good job of condensing a lot of a lot of information into basically bite-sized information, just kind of a general overview. I really like them. So if you're interested actually in getting kind of a sh very short introduction of any type of historical moment, I do recommend these. I've read about four of them for different classes and I find them to be pretty good, pretty solid. I would recommend doing further reading because I don't think this is enough, but it will get you started. I have The American Revolution by Gordon S. Wood, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Did this win the Pulitzer Prize? I have no idea, but I guess it makes sense because political Enlightenment, Revolution, American Revolution, even though this is a European-based class, that makes sense. Unlocks the Second Treatise of Government, very important piece of work. Mr. Locke is a very important dude, I bet this will be very dry, not gonna lie. And then of course I have Thomas Paine's The Rights of Man, and this beautiful edition. Oh yeah, look at that portrait, look at that spine, just such beauty. I have The French Revolution and Human Rights, a brief documentary history which sounds pretty interesting. I think the French Revolution is, a, I would think a lot of people would agree, it's a very interesting point in time. And I actually haven't taken any classes on the French Revolution because I focus on Russian and early modern history. So I'm excited to learn a little bit. And the last two books I have here are The Enlightenment, A Brief History, as well as John Jacques Rousseau's A Discourse on the Origin of Inequality. So yeah, that's a little look into my college life because I'm going to be reading those for one of my classes this semester. Wish me luck. I'm sure I'm going to be writing many a paper on these things. I'll keep you updated if you care. Back to regular programming. The next book I have to show you guys is The Crown Game by Evelyn Skye. This is a YA book that has been on my radar for a long time and that is because it's a YA fantasy set in Russia. 
I know. And it follows basically two competing sorcerers. And they're vying for a position of power to basically be the right hand man of the czar. However, they have to kill the other to get this position. And sorcery or wizardry is really rare in this world. I've heard super great things. I love Russia. I love czar's history. But at the same time, I'm always nervous going into these things because if they're not accurate in some ways, it really bugs me. But I have I have ex I have high expectations, so. I'll keep you updated. And the last set of books are from Book Outlet, and of course, if you didn't know, I have a Book Outlet page, which I will leave linked down below, but yeah. The first book I got in there I was super pumped to see, and that is A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This is the winner of the Pulitzer, I'm sorry, this is the winner of the Man Booker Prize last year, and it's a whole bunch of perspectives set in Jamaica, and I think it has something to do with Bob Marley's death. It's kind of all I know, and I think it follows seven killings, starting with Bob Marley being one of them, and I, I think there's like countless perspectives in this, like a crap ton, which I think is an interesting way to tell the narrative, and I've heard really great things about this, so I'm glad to add it to my collection. Next up we have Slate House by David Mitchell. I, ha I don't know anything about this, but I think it's sort of a companion to his Bone Clocks novel that came out a couple years ago, which follows a family through a couple generations. So I think this has something to do with it. I didn't want to read too much onto the synopsis, just in case it gave anything away of the Bone Clocks. I will say this is much, much, much shorter than the Bone Clocks, but I added it because it was such a good price and hardcover, and I don't know, I've heard good things. Next is a fantasy novel that I've had my eye on, and that is The Emperor's Blade by Brian Stavely. It was in one of these beautiful, big, floppy fantasy paperback editions that I just cannot say no to. They're my favorite thing of the entire world. This novel appears to be about a ruler who just recently was assassinated, and he has children that are all scattered on different parts of the world and they have different destinies and they all have to try to stay alive because they have assassins after them as well. It sounds like a lot of political intrigue. The cover is super cool. I'm very into that. And um, it has really great reviews, which is generally how I pick fantasy. I just look for things with good reviews, read a little bit about the synopsis, and then I'm like, all right, I pick you. This book I have to show you guys is what I'm pretty pumped about, and that is uh, All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. This book has been getting mixed reviews, but because I found it for such a good price, I decided why not. This is a magical realism fantasy story following two kids. That follows two kids that are best friends, and they both have very different abilities in the ways that they see the world. They are both are very special, and I think it's this, this is their story. I don't know, I'm a sucker for magical realism in any, any capacity, or any just sort of surrealist fiction. I always, always love it. So, I'm hoping to enjoy this, but I will keep you guys updated as I'm a little hesitant, just based on some of the early reviews I've seen, but again, I'll let you know. Alrighty guys, that is my huge freaking book haul. I'm realizing now how large it is based on the stack that I just stacked up. I didn't realize it was that big until it, I realized it was it was very large. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon with another one soon. Goodbye!